Hi guys, thanks for coming back to another episode of Train Simulator Classic. Today we have another of one of DG, DSG DDR's older models. Another Penzi model, perfect for the horseshoe curve. This is the I1 210s. These were, I believe, the largest decapods ever built in the United States for U.S. railroads. Real hefty monster of a locomotive. Uh, if I remember right, one or two of these are preserved. Uh, but these were built for heavy coal drags on the Pennsylvania Railroad and uh, other freight operations. Pretty rare to ever see something like this on a uh, on a passenger train. Uh, they were notorious with the crews for being rough, very rough on the tracks. Uh, I don't know if they swayed. I just I know they were pretty notorious for being really really rough. Uh, these are not fast, these are not built for speed. Around about 40, 50 mile an hour, that's about what you'll get up to with these, but uh, they'll walk away with a heavy load a whole day. But these are real, absolute powerhouses. Uh, let's see, yeah, that's Pennsylvania Railroad number 4483. This is the one and only survivor of the lot unfortunately um, matter of fact if I remember right it's in pretty poor shape too but unfortunately well fortunately we have one but unfortunately it's not, not the most cared for the Pennsylvania's a lot <laughs> but uh, these came with uh, is it pretty unique these used to come with a couple different tender styles. I'm kind of sad that DSGDR didn't opt to uh, to include both of them. For those of you that play Trains Simulator, Trains 2019 or whatever model, you'll know K&L did a version uh, very similar. But his version does show for uh, Trains the two uh, tender options one would have seen. So these would have come both with the shorter tender like this for more localized runs such as here Altoona to Johnstown or Crescent but it also came with a huge over the road tender like a massively long uh, I believe they call them coast to coast tenders for long distance travel which would have been really cool to see in train sim but it is what it is I'm not complaining uh, it's nice to see in general anything new as far as steam locomotion goes and these are free you ain't gotta pay a dime for them these are free as free gets i believe these are the post-war models so there are a couple changes between the pre-war and the post-war uh, i'll have to do a video using k &L's model one of these days to kind of show that because there are some notable changes noticeable changes but uh here i believe we only have the post-war model for a train sim but a real beef a low beef of a model now like i said this is one of his older models so it's not quite as refined as that s1 that we just saw or his uh santa fe northerns far more uh, I don't want to say rudimentary but it definitely shows its age when you stick it up next to that S1 I don't know if he's done a redo a rework on these yet I know like I did, I did a, ver a video earlier on the E6's he uh, he reworked the E6's new sounds and such but I don't know if he's done it yet on the on the other eye ones. Right off the bat, it uses his normal smoke that 
I'm just I'm not hugely a fan of. I don't mean to pick on them, but I, I don't like the smoke. I really don't. The steam effects are not bad, but the actual smoke, you can see the objects that are blended together. It just it doesn't blend very well. It doesn't look that great, in my opinion. Just my opinion, but it's my opinion. <laughs> Other than that, though, I really have no complaints on this locomotive as far as visuals go. It looks really good really really good now these don't have a weathered variant these are just the uh, just the kind of cleanish but I will say there is kind of a notable or noticeable color difference between the tender and the locomotive which I find a bit odd the tender color almost looks more of a gray black like there's some gray mixed in with the black and then you hop up to the locomotive and it definitely looks a good deal darker. So that's fairly noticeable but not too terrible. <coughs> not too terrible. We got our little uh, our brakeman seat here. Our doghouse on the back. Modeling looks pretty nice overall. Pretty nice, pretty nice. We have actual rivet details, which again, I absolutely adore. I love when people take the time to do it. I know it's tedious, but I, I highly appreciate actual rivets instead of just a texture, a, a Photoshop texture paste it onto a flat object. I, I love seeing actual rivets. It sounds dumb, but it really does make a little bit of a difference. Standard train sim coal load. Nothing fancy there. But texture quality is really good overall. A little too shiny for my liking. It's got a little bit too much of a glean to it, but not too bad. Not too bad. Massive pumps up here, reservoirs up here on the front of the locomotive. It's kind of entertaining. So let's hop in it. Now these locomotives would have lasted right, right around to the end of steam for the Pennsylvania Railroad. These were, like I said, real beefy powerhouse locomotives. And while they were rough on track, these could go across most of the Pennsylvania Railroad's uh, owned lines, most of their network. So for being a real powerhouse locomotive and being able to go across most of their line, it's kind of hard to replace them until you get a, well, until they got into their GP9s, GP7s and such that just simply outdid them. But excellent looking locomotive. Let's see. Zoom in here. I believe we have yeah powered reverse. It does show exteriorly. This is pretty nice. Pretty nice indeed. Go back and forward. Everything looks pretty, pretty decent still. For it being one of his older models, I mean, there are, like I said, there are some little nitpicks. I think the lettering doesn't, the lettering font looks awesome, but it doesn't quite blend in with the rest of the texture on the locomotive and the tender. It doesn't blend very well. It doesn't have kind of the aged look to the lettering that the rest of the, cab and the tender show I mean it, it almost too obviously looks like a uh, almost too obviously looks like a comp a digital number but 
again it's not too terribly noticeable I love up here See that that looks awesome so let's hop in the cab now the cab is dark the cab is very dark so you're gonna want cab lights or you're gonna want to turn your uh, resolution up there we go there's a cab light so we have an external and external cab light internal and then boom external we're out here on the platform uh, did these I believe these have a mechanical stoker <coughs> engine brake train brake much like uh, most of his other stuff can fiddle with just about everything sanders bell cylinder cocks blower turn that on a little bit hud it is kind of entertaining that you get two separate huds especially when one kind of one almost lights up the whole cab but it's not too bad no sound to the uh, the roof but like I said this is one of his older models so bear that in mind this is this has been around for a pretty hot minute now so no sound for the windows and such but you can open them there's the sound so you gotta open them all the way for the sound windows wind deflectors doors which I believe or front you can either open the little uh, the little latch there or I believe you can open the whole door maybe maybe not maybe I'm crazy ah there it is it's just really dark I also believe these are mechanically stoked, if I remember right. Yeah. Oh, there's a couple of valves you can't play with. Ah, uh -huh. I found a couple, dude. If you're watching this, <laughs> just to poke a little bit. I gotta poke a little bit. Be wrong of me to poke, a, not to poke a little bit, but they are mechanically fired. So uh, you gotta. Now, unlike uh, smoke boxes, big boys, these are a little bit different of a stoker, so it takes a little bit of figuring out to, uh, well, to figure out how to run them. So we got our injectors, other blower injector, drain valves, water glass valves, stoker booster valve. Stoker C valve, goodness gracious, I'm tired. Mm. Ejector, pump, stoker main valve, compressors, oogly boogly, all kinds of bells and whistles up here. So, yeah, much like most of his models, you can still fiddle with just about everything in the cab, but I will say the cab probably shows it's aged the most so the cab texturing it's a little blurry a little dark a little like the windows are very obviously black very dark black oh. so they don't stand out very well to open even with your cab lights on and whatnot so the cab details the cab there's a lot of cab detail like physically to a fiddle with but the texturing is not his best work it could certainly stand to be updated but again like I said it's an older model and it's freeware it's free it's free it's free it's free you can't complain about free now I forgot to show this while it wasn't moving on the E6 but this one also has a, a water scoop that'll pop down boogity, boogity boogity now unfortunately the water scoop is not functional it's 
it does not pick up water I don't believe there's a single root I lie there is one I believe it's a British root I think the Riviera line but I believe there's a British root that does have a water trough but I don't know if even that one's functional but I don't to my knowledge we don't have an American root with a water trough so unfortunately the water trough in an uh, actual scoop doesn't work but it does raise and lower when our water feeds over here on the tender handbrake so just about anything and everything's fiddleable you can touch it you can move it fire don't look half bad Turn on our headlights. There's a headlight switch. Should be a uh, class lights here back here. So it's got two separate class light switches. Which I don't know if they go to. Because they're both lit right now. This is one of my favorite headlights. I know. Some of you might like that giant glare. I don't. It's got two separate sets of markers. One down here and one up here. So They do light up though. Which is quite nice. I don't know if you can change mm, facing color. No, you can't. But I, I love the headlight color. It's a nice not obnoxiously bright soft yellow glow of it just looks awesome that's what a steam locomotive headlight should look like no glare no flare not a neon white class lights on the tender I don't believe they're gonna light up though since I have a train hooked up to them yeah, nope well Standard Penzi with bell sounds pretty good. The bell does function. You can kind of see it again. This is kind of where its age shows through. Like I said, it's overall the locomotive is a little bit dark in my opinion. A bunch of shadowy areas and such that are just they're they're too dark. You can't really see the detail all that well. But it is there. Bell sounds quite nice. Let's center over here on our map so that we don't slam into a train anywhere. Through our maze of a yard in Altoona. Nah, it's good enough. We'll be on a passenger track, but I'm not heartbroken. Killer engine brake. Now, he is one of the first that I have seen that's done this. But, uh, the whistle cord does pull externally. <laughs> the whistle's not terrible, but it does, the ending loop is non-existent. It just cuts off. And I'm not a fan, I, I say this oh so often, I don't like beginning tunes on whistles. I like to be able to play the whistle myself. So that beginning little wind up, it just, I don't like it. But it does sound pretty good. These locomotives would have carried a Banshee style whistle if I remember right Mo a good many of them would uh, It doesn't sound too bad here, but 
it is an obviously older sound file and I don't think it's blended the best you hear a noticeable pop there where the middle loop begins and the ending doesn't exist it just cuts off as soon as the whistle is let go of so it's not my favorite but it's not terrible not quite like the uh, the k4s where it's got an obnoxiously long loop so it sounds pretty decent it's not too bad cutter breaks off now the physics are a little bit wonky on this locomotive it does immediately start rolling when you open your throttle bam we got we got pressure it immediately takes off it's uh that's a little bit of a an irk not terrible but and the sander doesn't stay open which i do kind of get a kick out of I do believe let's pull this back up. We do have sand on the outside, so the sander will stay on if you click it up on the F4 HUD. We do have sand on the first and third drivers, so front, middle, center. We have sand options right there. But like I said earlier, it does it does pick up and go a little bit quickly it does grab and roll now like I said earlier this is a real brute of a locomotive it's meant to walk away with a pretty heavy coal load that's the whole point in the design they're very heavy locomotives built for heavy freight so it's not such an issue that it walks away with this whole train so much as it takes off with it. It's a very instant grab and it's going. Which, uh, you know, I, I, I do kind of hope he, he reworks it a little bit more up to his newer standards, kind of like what, uh, what we've seen with the S1. I would love to see these get a, a, a fresh look, a fresh update. Again, I'm not hating on it. Uh, these are, uh, again, freeware models. And they're really nice for freeware. These are mm, quite awesome for freeware. Like, honest to gosh, these are one of his older models. And they still put to shame a lot of brand new freeware or payware models we see in the Steam, <laughs> in the Steam store. So, here's one of our little... Uh, It runs a little bit quick there. It's got, like I said, it's got some little things here and there that could stand to be improved today. But it's not, it's not bad. Overall, it really isn't. It's got his standard chuff sound, which, eh. It's alright, it's not my favorite. I kind of wish, uh, kind of wish there was a different chuff sound for it. It, it should sound deeper. It should have a pretty hefty, deep, noticeable, almost a punch, which this really doesn't have. But it's again not too terrible, not too terribly noticeable. His chuff sound, as it is, is a pretty decent chuff sound. I just. I don't like it. I don't like reused sounds. Reused sounds are always something that kind of irk me. So let's go out. Go out of some distance here. See how far away we can hear that whistle.
So we can hear it pretty far away. Not as far away as like his S1s. But you can still hear it a pretty decent distance away. This thing will absolutely get up and run too. Like it takes no time for it to get up to speed. Now like I said, these are not fast locomotives per se. You, The horseshoe curve is a pretty good fit for these. For a route as uh, most of the line speed is like 35, 40 miles an hour. And these locomotives typically wouldn't have got over 50. They were notorious for being rough. <laughs> But most decapods in general, the design's just not built well for high speeds. Well, it, it picks up and runs pretty quick. It it does uh, it does get up to its speed pretty easily. I believe the in cab signaling does work with the whatever the current signal is. It's just pretty nice. It's nice to see that in cab signaling work the way it's supposed to. <laughs> really good looking locomotive at speed. Now you guys kind of hear it starting to uh, blend out there, the uh, the chuff sounds. For those of you that have been around for the G tracks area, you're starting to starting to hear that speed chuff that came around with some of their earlier stuff some of their with their uh, the GS4s the Berkshires and whatnot well, look at that walking up this hill with this long coal drag like it ain't even there Not bad. Not bad at all. I would argue that this this locomotive model has aged better than the uh, rolling stock available with the horseshoe curve. In all honesty. With that nice lack of clickety clack or anything. <laughs> Yeah, the whistle could use some work. I don't hate the sound file, but it, it could definitely use some work, I think. Overall, really nice model. Highly recommend checking it out. Again, it's freeware. It's free. You can't go wrong with free. It's hard to dislike free. So, uh... Yeah, do go check it out on his website. As always, link in the description. There's really not much else I can say to it. Matter of fact, I'm probably just going to end the video and continue on my run for a little while. Because this is one that I really enjoy running of his. While it is older, it could absolutely stand to have an update. It is still one of my favorites to run in train simulator across the board. It's one of the best looking of the steam locomotives for the United States. And overall it's just a real joy to run. And it, it looks... <laughs> it's one of those odd locomotives that you can get away with these mile long... Well, not really mile long. A mile long would be a little bit long for this, but... For giggles and squiggles, you can get away with a nice long coal drag, which these locomotives are absolutely known for. All too often we get models that are, uh, their physics are just not right. Such as the old uh, nickel plate Berkshires and whatnot that'll barely run up this hill with a, a short train. But Yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed it. 
I love it. Go check it out. If you like any of his other stuff, chances are you'll probably like this thing. Overall, it's a great looking model. Great running model. The sounds could stand to have some upgrades, updates. Uh, texturing overall is really, really nice. All day. All day. 100% worth checking out, picking up if you don't have it already. If you like the Horseshoe Curve or if you like Pennsylvania Railroad products and steam, there's just really no reason for you not to have this in your collection. <laughs> so do go check it out, pick it up, run it, enjoy it. I will see you guys next time.